Hey there, Tiffany Thomas with TheWealthyTiffany.com, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about bonds. So get really excited. It's going to be a really fun video. Okay, maybe I'm being a little sarcastic because bonds aren't that fun, but I'm going to make this as painless as possible. And before we dive in, if you are ready for financial freedom right now, comment freedom below in the comments, or just give me another comment to help out the YouTube algorithm so other people can see this video. All right, let's dive in and talk about bonds. Um, I know I've talked a lot about stocks, but I had a request to talk about bonds. So I just want to quickly cover this subject. Um, the reason people invest in bonds or the reason they should be investing in bonds is to mitigate risk. They want to reduce that risk. So when they're investing in stocks, they are willing to be a little more risky because they want a higher return. And when people are investing in bonds, it's going to be a lower return, but usually a lower risk. And there's a few things I want you to keep in mind. The first one is when you're investing in bonds, because you are trying to mitigate that risk, you want to invest in bonds that are going to be the least risky. You don't want to have risky bonds because you have stocks which are the risk side of your investment the risk side of your portfolio or asset allocation if you will uh, so you're investing in stocks to get a higher return with more risk investing in bonds to reduce that risk and have a lower return so the way i like to look at bonds is if you are trying to reduce the risk um, I like to personally go with a bond fund and all that means is that it's a fund that has a ton of bonds inside of it. So a bond um, in essence is kind of an IOU note. You are um, giving your money to a government or a corporation and they are saying, okay, we're going to pay you back that amount plus interest on top of that. Um, but not all bonds get fulfilled. Some of them default. So you want to keep that in mind. It's not 100% risk-free investment. Although less risky than stocks, um, there's still some risk associated with bonds. When you are looking to decide which type of bonds or bond funds to invest in, there are different qualities of bonds, um, different grades. So there are A-grade bonds, and B grade and C grade, A being the highest, and it goes um, usually with triple A being the very highest, and then it goes to double A, then single A, and then switches over to B, and some of them even have AAB or ABB, um, but you wanna stick with the higher quality. So you really don't wanna be in the C quality bonds, the C grade, because those are going to be more risky and we're trying to mitigate our risk. We're trying to reduce that risk. So I would say, look at those higher quality, higher grade bonds or bond funds and invest in those. And the reason that I like going with a bond fund is because when going with a bond fund, you have all of those different bonds inside of there and they have different maturity dates. When you're investing in a bond, you select a certain time period to invest your money and then you are receiving um, that interest back on your money and all of your money back. Um, but when you when the interest rates um, go up or down over time, if you are invested in a bond fund, so a whole bunch of different bonds, instead of a single bond, um, you're going to kind of even out that interest rate. Um, because if you're stuck in one bond, you're stuck at that interest rate for the whole length, the whole time frame of that bond and when you have a bond fund there's going to be different maturity dates um, so it kind of you know they can start out having maybe like a two percent interest on those bonds but when those maturity dates hit they need to replace those bonds with new bonds which if the interest rate has gone up then it could be a three percent or four percent or five percent whatever um, i'm just throwing out different numbers it just varies over time on average good quality bonds have returned anywhere from two percent to four percent and the riskier the bond usually the higher return will be but that's not what we're looking for we're looking for the least risk possible with our bonds so our return is going to be lower um, but they start to replace that with new bonds 
inside of your bond fund with better interest rates. Uh, so you are, you know, increasing the money that you could be earning. And of course, yes, it can go the flip side of that. They could drop in time, but then you would have those original bonds in there that have matured. So you've made money on those in the beginning with a higher interest rate. Um, so that's just one of the reasons I like to invest in a bond fund because, um, you know, interest rates fluctuate over time and you can kind of just stick with a bond fund and not really worry about that because of the all of the different maturity dates that are going to be inside of that bond fund. And when you're looking for a bond fund, there's going to be an expense ratio associated with that. Um, so you can see when you're you know looking online at different funds to invest in, there's going to be a column that says expense ratio. You want to pay attention to that because you want to keep that expense ratio as low as possible because that's a fee you're going to be paying over time. Uh, so for example, Vanguard has what's called the Vanguard Total Bond Market Fund. And this has a number of bonds inside of it. And this has, I don't know, I think it's over 8,000 bonds inside of it. So there's a ton of bonds inside of this. And it has a really low expense ratio, 0.05%. Um, and they have an ETF version of this, which is 0.035%, so even less. Um, so you could take a look at that option. And this just gives you a whole number of bonds to invest in by just investing in the one fund. They have US government bonds inside of this fund, which are considered to be very low risk, along with AAA bonds, AA, single A, um, and I think they might have some BAA bonds inside of this fund. Uh, so you have a little bit of variety in there, but they're all high grade, high quality bonds, which is what we're looking for to reduce that risk. And there are a number of different bond funds. There's, I want to do, I do want to mention one other type, which is municipal bonds. And, and they have municipal bond funds. Um, but with that, you're not paying taxes on the money you're earning. And usually you're going to earn less money um, with a municipal bond, but you're not paying taxes on that. So depending on what state you are in, and if you have your money in a taxable account, so you'll be taxed on that money, um, so it wouldn't be like a retirement account, like um, an IRA or a 401k. Um, but if it is in just a brokerage or a taxable account, then if you're in a state with a high tax rate, um, that could be a good option for you, even though it's kind of lower returns, but you won't be paying taxes on that. Um, so that is one thing to consider. But this is what I want to point out, that studies have been done over time. And the thing is, what's most important when you're investing is your portfolio asset allocation, which just means the percentage you have invested in stocks versus the percentage you have invested in bonds. That's your asset allocation because there's two types of assets, um, bonds and stocks. Over time, they've compared a person that's investing in the US stock market and also the foreign market. Um, and then they have investments in bonds and let's say they're investing in municipal bonds or municipal bond funds and it's a 50 percent in the stocks and 50 percent in the bonds um, and then they take a look at someone else's allocation and maybe they just are investing in the u.s stock market and not in f the foreign stock market and then their bond fund is the total bond market fund um, so a little bit different inside of their investments, but they also had 50% in their stock investment and 50% in their bond investment, and their returns are actually very, very similar. I don't want you to get hung up on, you know, not investing because you're really worried about which funds to invest in, um, because it really is more about your asset allocation. When you're younger, you have a longer time frame that you're keeping your money invested, so you really want to do a high risk investment until you become closer to when you want to pull out your money. Then you could switch some of that over to bonds, which is going to be less risky. Um, and you know, this varies for individuals because of their certain circumstances. And yes, there are recommended ideas out there on how much you should have invested in stocks versus bond, bonds. Um, because of your age. But I feel like where so many people are, 
you know, retiring early now, that that's not really an effective way. So you really have to figure out on your own what it is you would like to be invested in based on when you would like to retire, when you want to start pulling out that money. Um, because if you are okay having a high risk, if you have a high risk tolerance, then you could leave 90% of your money in stocks and maybe put 10% in bonds, um, even in retirement. Um, it just kind of depends on you and how risky you want to be and how flexible you are as well. Because if you, you know, if you have a lot of your money invested in stocks and the stock market crashes, then you're not going to want to pull out that money at that time. You'll want to wait for a little bit until it starts to come back up. So if you're flexible and you think, you know what, I can just get a little high, a little side hustle for, you know, for this year, um, or find another way to create some extra income. Um, and be okay with that or not take your really expensive vacation one year and take it, you know, in a couple years when the stock market market has gone back up. Um, if you're willing to be flexible, then you don't have to worry so much about having so much invested in bonds. You can still have that high risk and still be getting those really good returns and have a lower amount in bonds in a bond fund because you're willing to be flexible. Um, and you know yourself, if you are going to go crazy, if you have so much invested in stocks, if you have that 90% invested in stocks, that you're not gonna be able to sleep at night and you're gonna be so stressed and worried all the time, then don't do that, you know? Start to put more toward bonds so that you feel comfortable, so you can sleep at night um, because your health is really important. And if you do want to invest in single bonds, um, make sure and look at that maturity date and the rate that you're going to be getting, that interest rate, they call it a coupon rate. Just as a side note, when you are investing in a bond fund, sometimes there are minimums, um, which could be a $3,000 minimum. But if you want to use the, or invest in the ETF version of that index fund, then it's just the price of the ETF, which can be pretty low, maybe around, you know, a hundred bucks or something. So keep that in mind based on how much money you are going to be investing in bonds. And just remember that you're trying to mitigate the risk and that's, that's the main purpose for investing in bonds. And you know, like I said, it's not a hundred percent guarantee that you're going to get all of your money back because sometimes the bonds do default. So that's another reason I like the bond fund. Um, you have all those different maturity dates. So the interest rates are changing over time. But if some of them do default, then you're not out all of that money because you have so many bonds inside of that one bond fund that you're invested in. So if a few of them default, not a big deal. But if you are only invested in one bond and that defaults, that's a big deal because you want to mitigate your risk. You don't want to lose all of your money or the majority of your money, when, especially when investing in bonds. Another point that I wanted to bring up is that investing in CDs, certificate, to, uh, certificate of Deposits, instead of bonds could be a good option. Um, you may want to take a look at that, and I'm not going to give you all the details on CDs. I can do that in another video if you would like. Comment below and let me know. But, you know, it could be another option because sometimes those CDs have some pretty good rates versus the bonds that you would be investing in. And the total return on that bond fund that I mentioned, the ETF version, um, for a 10-year period, and it was after taxes, it was about 2.3%. Um, so, you know, it really does vary depending on how long you keep your money in there. Um, but possibly on average, it could be about 2%. Sometimes it'll be less than that. Uh, or more than that. But that's why another option could be looking at CDs because that is a fixed rate over time and there's different lengths of CDs that you can get. Um, I mean, sometimes it's even like a five month or a year or 18 months, um, but that could be kind of a nice option and that interest would be paid to you. It's usually monthly and you can take that out if you would like or you can just continue to reinvest it, but it would be at that fixed percent. Um, so you know, you can kind of think about that and decide maybe you do want to put some money in CDs instead of in bonds or a bond fund, uh, just depending on your preference. And if you want to kind of lock in that interest rate, um, instead of doing a single bond, which could default, 
Um, you could do a CD, which you're insured, FDA ins insured, up to $250,000 with most places. You want to make sure, you know, whichever place you choose, that you are insured up to a certain amount and just to keep it safe because we're mitigating risk, right? We're not trying to do something risky here. Uh, that's for the stock investing, not the bond investing. Um, so hopefully this kind of helps you get an idea on if you want to be investing in bonds or when to invest in bonds or how much. So if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and share it with someone else who would like to hear this information. And if you guys have other ideas about content you would like me to create for you, please put that in the comments below. And please hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That will really help me out and we can get this message out to more people. And you guys, just as a side note, uh, since it's Halloween time, I do have Halloween nails. I was a tiger for Halloween, so I have tiger nails. Um, all right, you guys, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the bond video and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.